And thanks for joining me. Let's talk today about how to improve stage speaking skills. That must mean that you're here looking for a couple of ideas as to how you can get better. It means also that you're probably on stage a lot. So congratulations, first of all, for being that awesome that you have to now look it up and make sure that you're improving. Well, let me give you 10 extremely cool tips that I know are gonna help you. I'm Jason Hewlett, I'm a Hall of Fame speaker. I've entertained and spoken all over the world. So let's improve that stage speaking. Number one, leverage the power of visualization. Now you probably did this in order to just get the first few gigs that you've gotten, but in order to improve your speaking skills on stage and your stage presence and so forth, having this visualization is really essential. You see, a lot of the time I think that for myself, when I have not done well, it's because I'm worrying about what the audience is gonna think about me. And so then I get on stage and I've already essentially manifested how they're going to watch me. <laughs> and so then I have to come back to this visualization practice. Mentally, before you go on stage, what are you doing? I mean, are you, checking your emails? Are you on the phone? Are you getting a tragic text from somebody? There are some things that are hard to avoid, but I can say that this mental visualization is about what you're thinking on the way to the event, whether it's while you're driving or flying. I think about the practice of this while I get uh, on an airplane, for example. You know, it's a tight space. It's kind of uncomfortable. I might be working on my presentation in my mind or on the slide deck, but I want you to think about visualization. Are you going through your presentation and how well it's going to go? Are you thinking through the lines that you know need to land? It's not to say that every single line doesn't need to land. I mean, it's important to hit your marks, right? But there are certain parts of every single speech where you could break it down into little segments and you say, I need to make sure to hit this mark and hit this one. And as you say them to yourself, you know that you've got it. These types of visualization tricks are essential to your success. Number two, embrace authenticity and vulnerability. A lot of speakers think I need to get on stage and just nail it and be perfect and look perfect and all this stuff. And I say, well, do your best to look your best, but don't try to be perfect. You know, the audience can see right through that. And so embrace vulnerability, embrace being authentically who you are. And when you start to speak, if you make a mistake, that's okay to acknowledge it and just be like, ah, I said that wrong. <laughs> I've done this actually a lot and the audience loves it. Here's something I've done really interesting. I wrote a quote that is a great quote and I mess it up a lot. So the quote is, you have talents I don't have, I have talents you don't want. And it's a comedy line because I've just done a bunch of weird things with my face. However, I've said it wrong before where I say, I have talents you don't want and you have talents I don't want either. <laughs> like, and I'm like, I said that wrong. You have talents I don't have, I have talents you don't want. For some reason, the audience loves it even more because they realize I'm authentic, I'm imperfect, I'm being vulnerable. When it comes to your vulnerability, a lot of that comes down to stories that you tell. When you come up with the stories that you're going to share as you, being yourself, being the person who's not perfect, they'll appreciate it more. If you're not quite sure what your stories could be or what your signature moves might be, and I call it signature moves because each of us have something that makes us uniquely who we are, just like I showed you these faces that are weird, right? That's something that I share on stage. I wouldn't hide that even though it's a weird thing to do. There's a point to it. And so if you wanna learn about your signature moves, I encourage you to go to jasonhewlett.com forward slash ICM. The ICM process will help you to discover your signature moves and that which makes you unique. Identify, clarify, magnify. That's what ICM stands for. Have you identified your gifts, traits, talents, and skills? Have you clarified it with other people and have you magnified it in every speech that you give? When you do these things, the audience is gonna love you for your authenticity because you're sharing something that only you can and you're vulnerable when you do that. They'll love you for it. So go to jasonhewlett.com forward slash ICM, enjoy that quick video and then take the assessment. It's going to rock your world and be awesome. Number three is to harness the art of storytelling. Yeah, storytelling is where it's at. I already talked about it in number two, but I want you to know that as you embrace your vulnerability and your authenticity and share it, 
Harnessing the power of storytelling is where it's at because when you share stories, people remember them, they feel an emotional connection. And nobody's better at teaching this than Kendra Hall. If you haven't heard of Kendra Hall, she is one of the greatest speakers in the world. She teaches storytelling. She's written multiple books about it. But if you go to her website, KendraHall.com, you'll see somebody who has mastered the art of storytelling. She's made her career as a speaker on stage for it, and she's made millions of dollars because of it, and is very famous all across the speaking circuit and all over the internet. So go check out Kendra Hall. Kendra Hall, what I appreciate about her, obviously, she's a great family person. She's a great businesswoman but she has some really great quotes that I love. She said this, the irresistible power of storytelling. Don't you love that quote? The irresistible power of storytelling. I believe that there is a true power to it and it is irresistible. She also said this, in business, those who tell the best stories win. In life, the most important stories are the ones we tell ourselves. Boom! Kendra Hall, when you come up with lines like that, it makes people think at such a different level that they're going to follow you. So you need to check her out and check out her books as well. She's written the book, Stories That Stick, as well as Choose Your Story, Change Your Life. Go check it out. Now let's talk about number four, utilizing non-verbal techniques and body language. Yeah, hmm. Communication isn't just this, is it? Nope, it's the way we use our body. It's the way I use my eyes. It's the way I use my voice. It's the way I use my smile or my, this is a sad story, this is a happy one. Don't tell a sad story like this, no one will believe you. <laughs> Think about your body. What are you doing on stage? In order to improve stage speaking and skills, I believe, knowing how to use your hands and where to put your body in terms of how much to move or how much to stand still and firm in place. There are different ways to share characters just by the way that you move your body or use your voice that's even more important than the words you share. So how are you communicating through your body? Number five is forgotten by a lot of people, but it's to master the art of pausing. Pausing, yeah, it's hard to do. It's hard to do on a video like this even for me because you know I want this thing to keep clicking along, right? But when we're speaking, there's something really interesting that happens. We're speaking really fast and we're giving a lot of great content and the next thing we know, if we don't give the audience a chance to catch up by pausing, then they're not gonna get it. Unfortunately, you may have just said something so profound and it just went right past because you're speaking right on to the next point. If you want to improve your stage speaking skills, this right here, mastering the art of pausing, is the quickest way to improvement overnight. Number six, I would encourage you to engage the audience through interaction. Now, a lot of speakers are really good at delivering their speech. They give a great monologue, but a great speaker is engaging with the audience. They're interacting. It's a dialogue. It's not necessarily a monologue. It's not me talking to the audience. It's me talking to each person one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm talking to them all collectively, but through a one-on-one -on -one way. This is a nice interaction. Another nice interaction is through making them laugh or maybe through some music. Maybe it's a story like we've talked about, or even some of the cool technology that's out there now, which is so spectacular. You could do Q&A or polls. You can do Mentimeter, if you've heard of that, or Talkadot. There's a lot of cool technologies now that allow you to interact, engage with the audience. I have friends who've made a living as game show hosts for corporate events. They've improved their stage speaking skills just because they do this type of thing where the audience is coming on stage with them or they're going out into the audience. Interacting with the audience, that'll improve your stage speaking skills very quickly. Number seven, harness the power of vocal variety. I really love this topic and this one because when it comes to giving a speech, a lot of people are very monotone and they talk like this for an hour and it's very boring. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. So in order to improve your stage speaking skills, record yourself. Listen back. Is it something you'd want to listen to? Does it keep your attention? I don't know if you notice, even just in this video, how I do that with my voice and whether it's the words I'm saying that are interesting to you or even just the way that I say it. A lot of it is vocal variety. It could be something where I shift my voice and go a little bit higher and more excited. Or I could be more stern and say, this is very important for you to learn. Vocal variety is where it's at. As you start to add and implement that into your speaking, 
wow, people are going to be blown away by how much energy you bring to your presentation. Your words land better, your points are greater, and everyone will be grateful that you have vocal variety. Number eight, seek constructive feedback and constructive criticism. Now you have to be careful with who you're going to ask how to speak better or how to be better on stage. But hiring a good coach, finding somebody or a peer who's a good speaker that you look up to and you say, I want to be like them. Well, they can help you get there. But I'd be very careful with this one. Just make sure that you find feedback from the right people. The one that's going to be the harshest critic is yourself. So I'd recommend that you record your videos of your speaking. Yeah, record yourself. You could just maybe record it on audio and listen back if you don't want to watch yourself. It's hard enough to listen to yourself because you probably don't even like your voice and that's normal. But record yourself, watch it back. Don't be too harsh, but just say, I could improve this next time or I could take that part out or I need to do that every single time. Record everything. That's the best feedback you're going to get. Let's talk about practice, mindful presence and focus. Here's what I love about this. When you're speaking, you're there. You can't be anywhere else. Don't think about what's happening tomorrow. Don't think about yesterday. Don't even think about what happened on the way to the gig, unless it's really good to share it. <laughs> I would say be fully present in this moment, 100% focus on that audience. Do not have alerts on your phone or on your watch. Turn everything to airplane mode, be fully present. I've had opportunities where I've gotten on stage and I was about to inspire and make thousands of people laugh or feel good about themselves and I, hadn't turned on airplane mode on my watch or my phone. And then I got on stage right as some tragic news happened. Whether it was something tragic in the world or something horrific in my personal life, that's a really tough place to be right as you go on stage. There are gonna be times where you can't help it and something's just going to happen and you still have to take the stage. But to be candid, if you can get to a place of being mindful and present and focused on the audience, right in front of you. They'll love you that much more because they know that nothing else is distracting you from them, that you love them and this is their gift that you're giving them. This is a great way to improve your stage speaking skills immediately. Number 10, commit to ongoing learning. I hope that you'll consider for yourself the idea of having a coach, finding somebody that can help you improve, whether it's in a mastermind group or investing in online courses. I even admire you for just watching this entire video and yes, I want you to think about for yourself how you're going to implement for yourself what we've talked about here. I've given you 10 great ideas and when it comes to coaching, who are the coaches that you're willing to invest in for yourself? Online learning is great. Reading books, essential. Getting the opportunity to be on stage a lot, all of it matters. But having somebody who can see what you can't see, they can see your blind spots. That's what you need. I hope that this video has been helpful to you and I want you to know if you're looking to improve your stage speaking skills, I have lots of other cool videos on this channel for you to check out. It'll improve your body language, it'll improve so many things about your speaking as well as how to write a great speech. I would love it if you'd like and subscribe and if you have anything you'd like to say in the comments, I will reply to every single comment. I'm excited for you to continue to improve your stage speaking skills and thanks for joining me.